Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be revisiting the game engine RPG in a box. Now it's been a very long time since I checked this one out. The last time I looked at it was in 2019. And we're going to look at how much new features and functionalities have been added since. I know the developer has been struggling a little bit for exposure lately and hopefully, because I really love exposing myself, this video will help. Wait, that didn't come out right. Anyways, RPG in a box. Looked at it back in 2019 and it is what it says on the tin. This is a game engine for creating RPG or role playing games uh and it's all that you could expect all the tooling you'll need it is very comprehensive in the features and functionality available uh it is available up on itch.io i will have the relevant links down below it is commercial software but it has a pretty small price tag of 25 bucks uh, it's had a lot of updates over the years it's also got um a demo version it's got a few limits uh two maps per uh, project, limits in the map sizes, and there's a splash screen on the exported games. Otherwise, you're getting the full fat functionality. There's also some demos you can download to check out. That's what we're going to be looking at today is the demos that come with it. Uh, it's also available up on Steam if you are interested. They should probably lose the early access software label. I actually think that it hurts sales after a while. So my recommendation to the developer on this one, especially when you are looking for more exposure, just say that it's ready because it's, it's a very robust application. So he's done some stuff basically where he says he's going to have trouble doing this full time unless he gets a little bit more exposure. And hey, let's expose it. So without further ado, let us jump in and take a look at RPG in a box. Uh, here you can see it. It is very much for voxel style games. So if you do not like voxel art, this is not the engine for you. However, you are not limited to a single perspective. Although you do have a free camera option, we can uh, move things around. Uh, I forget what rotate is, but we can orbit this way. Is it alt to rotate? No. Anyways, you can free, free move the camera around, but we can also lock it into various different perspectives. We can do an isometric style camera angle, and we can also actually pick a single frame there and make this a first person style editor as well. So you by no means are you locked to a single graphical style here. Now you're going to find there is a very comprehensive set of tools in here. So if you do like this art style, you're going to find pretty much everything you need. I'm going to go back over here, get rid of this so I get my start bar back. All right, here we go. So you're going to see over here on the side, we have a number of different maps from the demo. I have one of the maps opened up. We can go into the map tool and we can go into like uh, the placing modes where we can place tiles in. So for example, dungeon floor tile, I could start filling in the water. You got tools for interconnecting things together. And then we go into editing tools and you can edit anything in the world. You'll notice when I have it selected, you'll come down here, you'll get an overview of that entity themselves. So we're going to switch here to entity properties and you can see how you can control a given entity. So you can make tool tips for things. You can have frames of animation going across the board. Uh, you can have it trigger uh different events on things happening. So when the character interacts with this, it will trigger an event. And then it runs this gem underscore chess script. We'll come back and look at how scripting works in a second. Uh, it's easier than say GD script. There's a visual version of it, but you can also um, get into the code if you wish. So we'll see that in just a minute. But that is basically how the world is composed. There's a decent selection of starter assets to get you going. Uh, at the same time, there is actually an asset library that you can pull from. So there are what, I guess 15 pages worth of assets we could go ahead. So if you want to bring something down, such as this animated model, I can go ahead and import that into my scene. I think I already have it, but so now we have another model available to us. Uh, you also have the ability to create things yourself. So let's go ahead. We'll pick up one of these characters. So there you see, actually, we'll go with Goblin that we just downloaded. Here is the Goblin. This is the integrated voxel editor. So this is the in a box part of RPG in a box. All the tooling you need, including a full voxel editor are here. So you see, this is the death animation this poor guy has already died let's go ahead and see that boom so we can switch out to another animation here is an attack animation and there you see the results so you can basically go frame by frame here and it is uh, a voxel graphics package so I can start drawing things in here I can create uh, new voxels in the shape we've got tools for uh, carving out cutting away all the tools you need to make voxel art are available right here you can also import um, common voxel um, formats, including magical voxels format. So if you want to use your own tool, you can use it that way. Also, coincidentally, uh, you can export out um, your creations to a tool such as magical voxel. So the voxel editor is one of the editors that is attached here. We also have editors, for example, dialogue. Let me go down here and find a dialogue from our example. So let's open one of these up. So here is talking to a gray cat. And there you can see that's a pretty simple dialogue. Let's get a uh, get one a little bit more complicated. You can have um, the dialogues actually triggering off scripts. 
So let's talk to Sarah. All right, so here's a more complicated way of dialogue working. You're going to notice your dialogues can also talk to global variables. So you can do it. If the, if the person has a key, then we'll go ahead and say uh, the appropriate conversation. So thanks for finding my book. Or we can switch off to here and say, um, you know, oh, hello, I just met you. Or we can say, I lost my book, blah, 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 blah. So here is how all of the things work. And again, your dialogues can trigger off and do scripts. So you can see how you can use conversations and interact them with uh, game logic themselves. So nice comprehensive dialogue tools here as well. Uh, you've got control over who the, who the dialogue is between, the orientation. And again, you can fire off these scripts, which can be edited right here, by the way, uh, within the dialogues as well. On top of that, we also have a UI uh, editor for creating your own custom themes for your particular game, widgets for your game, scenes or screen story, uh, the main menu, you can define it right here, and the end credits. So you have this nice uh, comprehensive set of tools here. We also got tools for creating items in your world. If you've used something like RPG Maker, you know what this is all about. At the same time, you've got tools for setting up combat in the the combat format that's available here. We've got things for uh, setting up loot drops, uh, setting up random encounters, creating enemy spawns, and so on. We have statistics editors. So for example, when you level up, I could come in here and say, all right, add to the attack, defense, the currency, the speed, and so on of the characters. So we want to give the person 45 new hit points when they level up to level two, we can do so. We can change the experience required here. You can create um, equipment and currencies here as well. Uh, so that is the whole idea here. I think we can also create a new category. I'm not 100% certain on that one. Also, by the way, there is decent and solid documentation for this tool as well. Um, we've got a basic sound effects generator in here. This is SFXR. So there's that whole family. I've covered them a couple times in the past. BFXR, SFXR, and so on. It's a simple sound effects generator. So if you wanted to create explosions, each one's going to kind of randomize it from different uh, sound wave generators. You can, can change the settings for that you want here. and use it to create whatever sounds you want. Or you can just basically use the random stuff here, or we can take what we've got and just change it slightly. And you can go back in time and uh, go back to any of the previous sound effects in the history. At the same time, you've also got the ability to export your generated sound effects out into wave format, so you can use them however you want, or you can edit them in another tool or whatever. So a nice little simple sound effects generator built in there. Again, the in the box uh, thing really kind of stands out with this. So you've got You've got the graphics tools you need. You've got basic sound effects tools in here. You have a world map editor here, um, again, with multiple different cameras perspectives. So if you want to do, oops, did not want to save that. I want to do this. Uh, okay, I need to select the tile. Let's go back here, map tools, select. We'll select that tile there. And that will be our starting point for first person view. So if you want to create a first person style game, you can do that as well. Now, when you're actually done your game, you've got uh, the option to export out your game. Um, and you can export out to the major desktop platforms. So Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Everything here is very much nicely polished. Again, our library also has a number of placeable entities in it. Placing entities is super simple. So I'll go back to, let's go to an isometric camera instead. Zoom out here. So we are in uh, edit mode. Okay, so here to place mode, I wanna put a torch into the world. I can basically just drop it in. Like, so if I want to put a torch in the middle of water, I could drop it in that way. We also have the ability to bring in our characters. So our new goblin, let's have our goblin swimming in the water over there. We can do so. By the way, you can also connect tiles together, basically using this drag and drop system. And as you'll see here from this uh, icon here, uh, you can have scripts attached. So this is um, got a trigger event on it. Oh, no script here. So if I want to go ahead and add a script to it, I can do a lever zero script that will you know, be fired when that particular event occurs. And you can see how making your game is quite simple on the whole. All the different things that you may need to set up are also here as well. So we go to settings. Um, oh, no, this isn't actually where I want it. Okay, it's not settings, it's prop. Oh, it's right up here. So I go to uh, Game Explorer over here, and Game Configuration, and you see a lot of your global settings are available here. So you can create global scripts that will fire for various different events. Uh, such as exiting a tile or um, turning direction or so on. We can create a variety of global variables here. Uh, you've got settings for um, basically the, the whole engine-wide thing. You can set up various different key bindings. So you can have joystick or the up arrow or the W key all doing a certain event that fires off. And then finally, let's go take a look at the scripting process. So here you got a number of different scripts from this example. Uh, it's 
it's nice. It's actually this uh, visual scripting language here. So this is fired on the start event. Uh, and then what we do basically run through. So we've got things like uh, we load the map, give an item, display a message, display a different message. Um, and you can basically set up properties for like who is doing it, uh, make it so that the player can start moving, lock the camera and so on. If you're wondering what uh, building blocks you have to make this scripting work, well, those are all available over here in the scripting tools. So if we want to add an item to a container, boom, drop it. Is it I thought it was drag and drop. Okay, I'm not sure exactly how to drag in. All right, that's, oh, no, it's over here. All right, so we definitely have a bit of an offsetting bug there. But here you can see, dragged in, this will add an item to a container. We basically, we pick which one, and everything is um, kind of, you just click into and handle that. It's all using visual uh, tools. It's, it's a much nicer visual programming experience. It's kind of... Uh, more entry level as opposed to like the, the GD script visual programming language, which is kind of pointless. This is actually quite accessible and easy to use. So even if you had no prior programming experience in the past, you should be able to make game logic using RPG in a box without much, much issue. But you may also notice down here, uh, it's generating box site code. And this is what each one of those steps, everything we saw over here, all of these various different functions. And by the way, there's loops and uh, you can assign values and so on else here. Uh, but say we wanted to play a sound, we do the play sound function, or we can do it directly over here, and this is generating code. So it's it's just straight out text code. This, so display message, will ultimately be display message. So this hub contains a few small examples. Um, that'll be earlier on, display message. Bum, bum, bum. This hub contains a few small examples. So you see that is just basically the code here in text form. Over here, it's in visual form. So you update one, it updates the other. So let me just do it. And out. And there you see this, this is the, contains a few small examples. So if you want to work in code, you can work in code. But as you see, it's, it's, it's really entry-level, easy-level code. So if you've got someone that's like... 10 years old type thing and they want to get into coding well you can bring them in they can start using this visual drag and drop system but they can transition on to this kind of more cody type experience um and it's all editable right here we edit it here it should update it here as well nice polished tools across the board it's a really kind of cool engine and also you can quickly test out your game by clicking right here um yeah, that's kind of the extent of it. So let's head on back over to the web side of things. Uh, it is, again, available up on Steam and on itch.io. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we've got some development updates here that basically it's not selling as much as he needs. Uh, so he's going to basically have to get a job soon that isn't game development. And I don't want people to have to get jobs. I want them to be game developers. So if you like what you saw here, do consider checking it out. Again, there is uh, a free version. Also, don't worry. That doesn't mean there's not going to be support going forward. He put this up a day later. Uh, it will be completed no matter what. It's an extension of who I am. It's not going anywhere. I'm not abandoning it. I'm not letting it die. And I won't even be the slightest bit burnt out. So he, he does need to, uh, you know, make money so if he doesn't start selling more copies he's going to have to get one of those dreaded day jobs and we all know what those are like so if you like what you saw here do give it a check out uh, all the relevant links will be down below and that is ladies and gentlemen rpg in a box as you may be able to tell again from the graphics this is built on top of the godot game engine it's been under development for like seven years now and again uh justin uh if i have a recommendation for you um lose the early access tag i, I think honestly uh things being in early access to Steam. People don't have faith in them, and you've created. This is a 1.0 project. It's it's robust. It does what it says on the tin. It has complete feature completeness. You can't hide behind that tag forever. And frankly, making it a release is probably going to get more of the exposure that you need. And I think a lot of people are kind of turned off by perpetual early accessness now. So I would highly consider, it if you're going to keep going forward with this, Make a 1.0 release really soon. Uh, you've created a very robust project here. I think it's really cool, and I'm interested to hear what the rest of you think, both about the early access thing and about RPG in a box generally. Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.